Right on. Welcome back, or just welcome uh, to my little channel here. My name is Ben, if you don't know me. And today we're, uh, well, I'm sort of revealing my next project, I guess. Uh, that's sort of, first of all. Uh, well, this is it. Uh, as you can see, I'm sort of, I'm filming with my hands, not with my stand. Uh, uh, so, because this project is very big, um, it's about 1 meter by 30 centimeters. If at any point my uh, videography skills uh, aren't that great, I really apologize. Some of the angles might be a little weird, but just know that I'm trying my best. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing here on this trench, uh, this little trench system. Now, as you can see, I've already built the actual trenches. And uh, I must say, I'm I'm pretty happy with them. Um, I think it, it's good for a start. Uh, so as you can see, I've I didn't I wasn't able to find that many actual pictures from from the Second World War, but I use a lot of First World War inspiration. So keep in mind that this isn't going to be 100% historically accurate. But basically, what I did was I built up the sides using. Uh, these like sort of plywood walls with uh, with popsicle sticks. Then uh, at the top here, I sort of filled the rest with uh, sandbags, and then on top of that, I added the, the layer of soil, which is all solid as you can see. And here I have a little dugout, and um, so as you can see, there's a lot of empty space here in this in this trench system, and it would be a waste if. Uh, I just kept it empty, right? So today, what we're going to be focusing on is sort of spicing this up. As I did in my last video with spicing up the tank, we're going to be spicing up these trenches. So let's get on to it. So first and foremost, uh, obviously, the in order to give your trenches life, you literally need to give them life. So I'm going to actually be using a few different uh, uh, figures. So I have two main kits that I'm going to be using. First, I have the military miniatures German assault troops. Um, I'm not going to be using all of the figures, just a few, because otherwise it would get too overcrowded. But um, this is a kit from Tamiya, I think from the early 70s, maybe even earlier or later. I actually don't know exactly, but 135th scale. Uh, detail isn't amazing. But it's cheap, and, and you know I'm a teenager with low income, so well you do the math. And another kit I'm going to be using is this one, also from Tumia Military Miniatures, German Infantry Mortar Team. So uh, that dugout that I showed you guys earlier, this is what's going to be going in there. And again, you don't have to use Tumia; you can use any any other kit. Uh, you could even put artillery in that dugout. It's it's completely up to you, but this is just sort of an example of what you can do. So um, I've actually already assembled all the things I'm going to do, and I'm about to I'm about to paint them as well. And uh, there's no real point in making this video longer than it has to be. So if you'd like to see how I paint my figures, uh, you're more than welcome to. I have a video on it that was actually the first video I ever made on this channel. So the detail or the camera skills aren't the greatest, but uh, oh well, you get what you get. But still, it's it's comprehensive, and uh, I highly recommend you check it out. So that'll be in the uh, the link will be in the description. So yeah, right. Well, I've almost finished painting my figures. As you can see here, here's the commander for the um, for the mortar crew. As you can see, it's still very shiny, so I'm just waiting for all of the acrylics to dry before I put an oil wash and some highlights on there. And of course, use the, the pencil technique to bring out all of the uh, metallic bits. Um, again, if you want more in-depth uh, information on how I paint my figures, you can go to my uh, to my video about it, which will be linked down in the, script, in the description. Um, now, as far as the extras go, you can see we have two wooden boxes, wooden crates, I guess, uh, two, what I'm guessing are metal boxes, um, 
we have a small extras box, the mortar, of course, and some of the mortar rounds. Now, I, that's one of the main reasons why I love this kit is, and why you should get one, maybe not this exact one, but also one with quite a lot of extras, is because this is just a bunch of extra bits and bobs that can fill out the empty space in your trenches and really actually make it seem like people are living and fighting from there instead of it just being a mess of wood and sandbags, you know? So, uh, as far as the mortar and the metal boxes go, I first primed them in my uh, regular black primer. Then I gave them a coat of 50-50 uh, yellow olive and olive green, uh, both by Vallejo Model Air. I find that that gives a very nice army green color, uh, which they had their uh, mortars in. Now, I'm going to be working on those a bit later, uh, continuing some sort of primitive uh, weathering techniques. But as far as the wooden boxes go, I'm going to be going for a light German wood. And uh, so I'm going to give them a very light coat of middle stone by uh, Vallejo Model Air. And the reason why I say light coat is because it's a little hard to catch on camera, but there are some very good wood textures on there that I still want to be able to see uh, when it's actually finished. So, yeah, I'm just going to get to that. Right, so, um, as you can see, I've painted the, uh, the wooden boxes. They're a little bit yellow for my taste. Uh, not really wood color, but very, very yellow. But that's okay. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to, like I mentioned, add quite a few very primitive weathering techniques. And the main one that we're actually going to be using is we're going to add a uh, quite a heavy uh, sort of oil wash so basically all this is it's uh, a tiny bit of uh, all of this uh, it's a tiny bit of uh, black oil paint midnight black and some uh, umber so umber black and um, a ton of white spirit basically and you can do this to whatever opacity that you want really now um, as you can see I've also gone ahead and painted the mortar rounds themselves what I did that with uh, was a 70% roughly a 70% mix or a mix of 70% mahogany here uh, to 30% of the um, of the middle stone that, that we were using earlier to paint the wood. So here. So, uh, and yeah, that gives it quite a nice, almost like copper-like look, but not really. So yeah, really this is uh, very simple, applying the uh, wash. Uh, I have a, not really a big brush, but not super tiny either. A medium brush, I guess. And you're just going to want to apply it sort of everywhere. And it has a tendency to go in all of the small cracks and crevices and creases, which uh, is very nice because it brings out all of the details that maybe you were unable to see beforehand. And it sort of um, gives shadows in a way. So, very simple, very easy, to a certain extent also pretty cheap technique. Uh, I have just super cheap um, oil paints and a one liter bottle of white spirit that I picked up at my uh, local hardware store for, um, I think the, the uh, white spirit was about eight bucks or eight euros. 
and the uh, no, actually, no, sorry, the oil paints set, which came with five oil paints, was eight euros, and then the um, the white spirit was five fifty, I believe. So, like I said, pretty cheap, pretty cheap. Um, and the nice thing about this um, oil wash is that here, I'm hoping we'll still be able to have some, but on the um, on the wooden textures, it'll it'll sort of show the wooden textures again, which is nice. It sort of brings out the detail. And uh, it looks unfortunately like we've lost most of the detail, but oh well, that happens. I'm still not very good at airbrushing or painting or really any of this, or, I'm not horrible at it, but I'm not the greatest, <laughs> so, yeah, but, oh well, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and finish all of this, and, uh, show you guys once I'm finished. Okay, so now our, uh, sort of oil wash has dried, and you can see it, um, it darkens everything down a little bit, and sort of gives it a very nice and dirty look which uh, is actually a very nice effect, you know? So now what we're actually gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding some highlights, first of all. So what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get some white. You can use actually a, a cheap acrylic if you want for this, but I'm gonna go ahead and use um, my white from Vallejo just because I have so much of it. And you don't need too much. And usually I prefer doing this with a sort of softer-esque brush. So I have this one here, which I usually use for dry brushing. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip it a little bit in our paint. And I'm actually going to remove most of the paint on it. This is why it's nice to actually keep your uh, paper towels underneath a bit paint, full of paint so that you can actually see how much on there so once it leaves just a very faint highlight uh, that's exactly what you want so then what you're gonna do is you get your um, uh, your mortar or whatever it is you're doing this applies to a lot of things also figure painting and then you just sort of start adding highlights and this is great for metallics as well because it sort of adds uh, light metallic highlights and um, yeah it's almost it almost looks shiny except well you know it's not so then it um, so it's a cheap way of creating metallic highlights because you know metallic paints are a lot more expensive than regular acrylics um, you could also use nail polish or like the pencil technique but I find that this works very nicely and on figures, uh, you can do this on the, uh, you know, on the textile parts, on the uniform, for example. And what that does is it sort of counteracts the, uh, well, opposite to what we're doing here. It sort of actually counteracts the, the shininess of the, uh, of the previous paint coats that we added. And it, uh, it sort of dulls it down to the point where it become it, it, it looks a lot more matte while still keeping the highlights. So it's it's really a great effect. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this on armor or any bigger models because uh, there are a lot more efficient and better ways to um, to do sort of like chipping effects or uh, highlighting effects on there. But this is great for these smaller models here that and so I'm just doing this on all of it really uh, even on the wood parts and a little bit of paint actually goes a long way so you, you'd be quite surprised so yeah anyways I'm gonna finish this quickly and then I'll come back and show you guys the next weather and stuff right so um, this next part actually is we're gonna be enhancing some of the metallic highlights uh, so on the mortar uh, and these these metal boxes. Um, now this is completely optional uh, because you know it, it really isn't necessary. If you did the last step well, then 
you don't you don't need to do this um, but it's pretty much accessible to everyone so you know why not do it that is the pencil technique uh, the people who watch my videos frequently will know that I, I really like using this technique because it really is great for metallic effects so uh, very simple you just want to get like a, a pretty soft pencil uh, or just the softs that you have and go over it over all of the exposed edges on a metallic part and uh, this I would recommend doing on a actual tank uh, or like model because um, it's uh, it sort of has like fine chipping effects almost if that makes sense and um, so you can really get on those edges uh, where it's maybe a little hard to control uh, with a brush or with the sponge technique or whatever um, and you can get in there and make some nice metallic sheens and you know the same goes for these metal boxes like I mentioned just on the edge just go like that And then you can see in the light it has a very nice metallic shine to it and that's what we're after so yeah I'm gonna finish this and show you guys the last two steps of the weathering right so these new uh, so these next two steps uh, it doesn't really matter which order you put them in but I'm just gonna start with the uh, the mud first so now these mortars uh, you can see here on the other underside they have sort of a, a grip pattern because obviously these are fired very often out of the dirt really um, so what we're going to be adding is some mud effects uh, they don't have to be very heavy they can be quite light but basically what I'm going to be doing is I have some burnt umber here from uh, Vallejo Model Air and I'm going to put I'll put two drops just to start no three and then what I'm just going to do is grab a pinch of my homemade modeling pigment um, and my homemade modeling pigment is literally just sand but crushed up so there you can see and it can be roughly a 50-50 mix of paint to pigment but you can sort of uh, experiment and see what works this is going to be quite a quite a thick paste, but that's okay. And if need be, you can always add more paint, which I'm going to do here. I think I added maybe a bit too much pigment, so half a pinch. Okay, and uh, once you're happy with the consistency. Then you can uh, you can start to work with it. So what I'm just going to do here is I have my sponge, and I'm going to dip it in the paint, and uh, all you're going to do is turn it around and sort of tap it on. Now again, this doesn't have to be a very heavy effect. In fact, it's very light, but it does add character, which is of course what we're always looking for. And just make sure and build it up in layers. Now this isn't all though because my diorama is set in a very dry, well not very dry, but in the summer in Western Russia. So we're also of course going to be adding a lighter color to this as well. So you're going to want to get some, uh, some light brown also by Vallejo Model Air and just a little bit that's four drops and then half a pinch half of our pigment perfect and then you just uh, mix that up 
so you get the right consistency that you want. And then literally the same as, uh, as we did before. Grab a sponge. And this one you can do more sort of around as well, maybe on the top a little bit. And um, yeah, it's great. It's a great little effect. And uh, yeah, so there's that. So we got our mud down. Now what we're gonna do is, as you can see here in this little area, I have some crushed up black chalk. Uh, black chalk, you can you can probably get that anywhere, like at your local art store, art supply store, or maybe even a hardware store. I don't know. Uh, or school supplies, probably. Then I'm going to grab another soft brush, similar, or actually the same brush that I did the dry brushing with, and we're going to dip it in into our chalk, and then just around the top here, I'm going to brush some of it on. Or, alternatively, what you can do if you don't have such a soft brush, is you can also just dip your finger and go around as well also works. And a piece just broke off. It's a delicate thing guys, <laughs> but don't worry, I'll glue that back on delicately. Bam, and there we go. So that's pretty much it for the uh, for the mortar and like the all of our figures. And next off, I'm going to show you guys all of the bigger steps. There are some, there are some more steps that, uh, that are coming, of course, to sort of spice up the, the trenches. But I'll start with the bigger ones and slowly get down into the details. So, yeah. So, starting here, I'm going to make a sort of ladder because obviously they needed ways to get in and out of the trenches and I do have a sort of slope that goes into the trench that they could just walk into um, but I'm also gonna add a ladder um, just because I think it's pretty cool and I have this very nice figure which is sort of like a climbing figure which I figure would go very nicely with the, uh, with the ladder. So I've already gone ahead and measured out how long the ladder should be so you can see this little mark here and then what you're going to want to do is, of course, get two of these uh, barbecue bamboo skewers and cut them to length just with some ordinary garden cutters. Should do good. And they don't have to be exactly the same size. In fact, I think it's even cooler when it's uh, not exactly the same size. Uh, it just adds sort of the idea that it was made in the field. Then you're going to want to sort of get an idea of how, how far apart you want your, uh, your ladder to be. And then what you can do is uh, you can either build it up using the uh, barbecue skewers or you can also use toothpicks alternatively, for example if you were going for, for a smaller scale, but everything works. So I just have my... Uh, two skewers placed here and you're going to sort of measure it out roughly so that it, it overlaps both of them with extra room and then you just cut that and you're going to want about three to four steps on here depending on how how long it is so uh, yeah so I'm going to do that and get back to you guys. Now once you have your ladder pretty much set up, uh, you can remove the um, first two, or well, all but one of the uh, of the rungs, and then remove the second uh, post, I guess, or pole. Now you have this, and using a very thin length of wire, or string, sorry, well you can use wire, but I, I recommend string. 
I'm going, and this is this is a bit of a fiddly part, so apologies for this being a bit weird. But basically, you're gonna want to start wrapping around, and eventually, once you get the hang of it, you can sort of begin to attach it. And it's not really a matter of um, tying it or anything, but in a second we are going to be sort of uh, fixing it in place with our modeling glue. So it's very simple. And now once you have it roughly in the uh, shape that you want it, then you just get some uh, of your modeling glue. I'm using Ravel's Contacta Professionella, if I pronounced that correctly. I'm hoping I did. And you just dip your brush in there. And you just uh, sort of go over it. And this uh, this fixes it in place. It doesn't turn it to plastic. It still has like the, the string look. So don't worry about that. But it does... Once it dries, it does at least help to fix in place, and uh, at least avoids that it unravels. Because most of what's fixing fixing these these two pieces of wood together is the string, but you also have to fix the string together to each other, and this glue does a great job of that. So yeah, about three to five brushfuls should be good for this. And then you're going to want to repeat this exact step for all the other rungs um, and then do the same for the other pole. So yeah, that's, that's it for the ladder and then we'll move on to painting in a second. So now I actually have the, la or the construction of the ladder completed and once your glue is dry then you can move on to painting. Now painting is actually super easy. All you're gonna do is get some some burnt umber. I have mine from uh, from Vallejo Model Air, and before I was actually airbrushing it on, but uh, I've since found that I actually prefer brushing it on regularly because I find that it it sort of shows more of the wood texture and it's just a bit easier to control where the paint goes. So obviously, shake your bottle up, and you don't need too much, but. About three drops is good. And it's very simple. It's it's literally it's literally just like painting anything else to go over it. The only difference here is that a lot of the paint is actually absorbed into the wood or the bamboo. I don't know what this is actually made out of. Um, but that's not a bad thing. It might be a little light, uh, but that's okay because later on we're going to add an oil wash and that'll sort of give everything like a final dark tone. So yeah, I'm just gonna finish painting this and get back. Right, so now my acrylics are pretty much dry. You can see it looks very shiny, but it's, it is dry. Um, and now what I've done is I've just sort of uh, made an oil wash. This is mainly umber, uh, but also a little bit of black in there, and of course a lot of white spirit. Um, just to, and the black is just to darken it down. So, uh, very simple, uh, in case you're not familiar with applying a oil wash, it's just, and we're going to do this one pretty heavy handedly because it's going to soak up into the wood, like with the acrylics, and um, most of the color is actually going to disappear into the wood and soak up, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, it just means that you need to add a lot more of the actual, um, well, you know, uh, wash for it to, to make a significant difference. So yeah, pretty simple. You're going to let that dry. And once it's done, we're going to, we're going to move on to some dry brushing. But, uh, before we do that, I'm actually going to move on because obviously these oils take ages to dry. I'm going to move on to the next part, which is moving into some more detailed things. Uh, and I'm actually going to start with some crates and boxes and stuff. 
Now, of course, we already have the crates and boxes from the uh, mortar crew, which we're going to be using. So that's, that's a great detail. But I'm also going to be using these two here. Uh, this is a grenade box that will be going sort of in the corner of the dugout. And this is a barrel. And if you have a barrel from like Mini Art, for example, or I think ICM also has them, then that's great. But I don't, I don't, I don't have access to that. So this is actually an oil barrel from uh, from like a, a toy soldier's kit. Um, and it's a little, it's a little rough, and I've, I've tried to stand to sand it a little bit, and it's it's okay at the moment. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply some uh, some black primer over this and then eventually I'm gonna I'm gonna add a tarp on top which should sort of hide the, the intense seams here so yeah that, that should be okay so um, because I want to save some primer and not waste it at all um, I'm also gonna go ahead and at the same time do my uh, some smaller ish details which are the, the weapons I have um, here this is a Panzerfaust, and this is an MG32, about 42. Um, and then here I've also gotten some some other weapons. Uh, these are these are kind of Car 98Ks. Um, and what I've done here actually is just to give them some interest. I've uh, I've glued on some some slings that are made of of. Uh, like tin, tin, tin foil or aluminium foil and on this one I've also even added a bayonet on the end which would be pretty cool so we're gonna be using these and uh, I also have and this one is gonna be actually in a in a firing position I also have an MG32 with uh, with the bipod out which is gonna be resting at the edge of the dugout and we'll we'll sort of surround it in empty shell casings so uh, I'm just going to start by giving all of this a good uh, black priming and then we're going to move on to the actual painting starting with the barrel and the boxes. Right, so starting with this grenade box and also uh, an ammunition box that I forgot to show you guys earlier. I'm just going to uh, give these a coat of straight um, yellow olive, if I can find it. Uh, I don't know where it is. Oh, here it is, yes. So uh, just straight yellow olive, uh, and then yeah, just a, a simple coat. I don't obviously I don't, I don't pull back all the way on the um, uh, on the trigger, but you just give these a nice coat and uh, it's good to go. And then for this um, for this barrel, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a 50-50 mix of the yellow olive and the olive green which is what we did with the mortar and it gives again like a very nice uh, sort of army green look so yeah let's do that and then uh, show once we're finished and then again some primitive uh, weathering techniques right so here uh, you can see that the barrel is dry and I actually ended up deciding against the idea of the tarp, mainly because it's it's quite time consuming and it's a whole different process. And frankly, I'm a bit uh, short on time for today. But that's okay, I have some other ways uh, that we can do this. Uh, you will notice that on my uh, mortar crew, I only put like a fraction of the equipment on the, uh, on the soldiers. So I did leave out, for example, uh, one of the canteens, or no, well, all of the canteens, but here I'm, I'm putting one of them on top, and the main idea here is just to hide the, uh, the seams. And here I have a map folder that takes up quite a lot of space, and you can see that that hides the seam lines quite well. And all I did for color was I just added, um, I painted this in brown, in burnt umber, Give sort of a, a nice weathered look. Then I painted this in uh, a sort of darkened light gray, or er, well, this color, light gray, but darkened down with black. And then once this dries, I'm gonna I'm gonna paint the strap in black. Um, and then for weathering, I'm I'm not gonna show you too much about that. Uh, 
it's it's very simple literally what we did with the mortar as well we're just going over it with a uh with an oil wash and then we're going to dry brush it in the end and same goes for the ammo boxes the grenade boxes but for the meantime we can get on to the painting of the weapons and the painting of the weapons uh super easy honestly it's um so what you're gonna do is uh I have my own wood mixture here, but I'll, alternatively you can also use um, light brown or, or middle stone, perhaps. Uh, it depends on your taste, I guess. And uh, pretty simple, I'm not going to thin it down or anything. Um, I'm just going to put some of this on my palette here. And I'm going to mix it with some burnt umber. And mix it in a little bit until I get almost like a a middle brown, I guess. And then, simply enough, you need to know where all the wooden parts are, obviously. Um, but, okay, uh, Car 98K is pretty easy to, uh, to know where all the wooden parts are. But just for reference, on an MG32 or even 42, for example, the only places that are wooden are uh, the stock, and uh, part of the handle. So I'm just gonna paint these and again weathering steps it's just oil wash and the um, uh, what's it called the um, dry brushing and that, that's literally it. It's super simple and then I'll show you guys for pretty much the, the final step actually of this whole thing. So yeah. Right, so now sort of, I guess, um, a final step that we're going to do here. This is a pretty cool effect. I, I actually really love it. I tried it for the first time in my uh, video, in my video about a month ago, about, um, like, spicing up your, your tank, or, like, just adding sewage to your tank. Um, so, basically, what I have here, this is 0.6 millimeter uh, steel wire, and I've cut it to length. And each each one is about two millimeters long. Uh, obviously, that's going to depend on scale and the the actual weapon that you're using. This one's going to go on, a, on an MG32, or not on, but next to an MG32. And so, what you're going to want to do here is uh, we're going to be painting this a sort of basically like. Uh, well, brass color. Um, I don't actually have brass color. I have uh, I have sort of this gold here, but it's a bit too bright, so I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of black, um, and that'll hopefully give me sort of a nice brass color. And really, you're just you're painting these all by hand. Trust me, I've tried with the airbrush; it, it really doesn't work. So you are gonna need some tweezers for it and just a, a good brush. And it's, it's literally just as simple as holding it by one end and painting it uh, on the rest. So yeah, I'll just, this is a, a very time consuming process, but I'll show you guys once I've finished. It's pretty cool. Right, so as you can see, our uh, shell casings are pretty much finished now. I think they look uh, pretty nice. Not all perfectly the bronze color that we were going for. But well, that's fine, you'll barely notice it once it's on the actual model. So uh, now let's go to uh, fixing the, well, the, what we just worked on, onto the actual model. So, yeah, let's do that. Right, so I'm now uh, sitting on the floor because of the sheer size of this diorama. It doesn't even fit on my, uh, well, on my workbench. So I'm sitting on the floor, uh, and here is all of the stuff that's going to be going on my diorama bridge as well. Uh, if you want to see also how I made these, these uh, barbed wire coils, check out last week's video um, where I go in depth explaining how to make the actual barbed wire and how to make the coils as well. Uh, pretty cool video and it'll be linked down in the description below. So uh, like with the building process, I'm going to start with the bigger things and eventually work our way down slowly um, and it's 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 a little tricky sometimes when you're uh, you know um, 
gluing stuff on to your model or to your diorama, sorry. Um, but you just gotta try your best and see where it lands you. So here I have my, um, my bridge and I'm sort of, well, I'm holding the camera with one hand. So you could use a brush. I'm just gonna dip mine in really uh, into my uh, Contacta Professionella from Ravel, like I was using earlier. And with a little bit of glue on there already, I place it in there, right? But then what I'm gonna do is with my brush, I dip it in to the glue, and I'm just gonna go around the edges just to make sure that it really, ah, uh, yeah, see it's tricky. It's hard, but um, it's it's really there's there's really nothing special to this. If I'm one hundred percent honest, it's just a matter of patience and time, and uh, eventually you will get there. So yeah, that's <laughs> it's really all, and you can really work in whatever configuration you want. You don't have to use this exact stuff that I'm using. You can. This is it's it's lovely. It's it's creative. It's fun. Um. Well, no, this part isn't fun, because it's fun, but it's not fun, because I don't like gluing stuff together, but uh, you do at least see uh, the trenches, like, sort of taking shape, and it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to show you guys once I've finished that. Right, so now, as you can see, I've sort of set up everything uh, in the trenches, and it's looking mighty sexy, not going to lie. Uh, it's very nice, it's very nice, I'm very happy with it. Um, but if you'll look closely, some of these things, they just, they look a bit foreign, like they just don't belong there. Um, so just to sort of tie it into everything, I have a bag here of my homemade modeling pigment, which if you don't already follow this channel or don't watch this channel, basically what that means is it's just crushed up sand, so it's very, it's very, very fine sand. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I have a very fluffy brush, you can use like a makeup brush or something, I just got this brush from, like cheap from the dollar, or from the art supply store. And really all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop it in some areas, very simply, and sort of brush it over. And, uh, I'm gonna put some on the floor here, actually, so that it's better to access. Sorry, this is really awkward with one, like, filming with one hand. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's like, some of these, uh, some of it is a little awkward occasionally, like this filming. But, anyway, so, I'm using my fingers here just because efficiency. Um, but you can see, just sprinkle some of the, uh, sand on, and then once you've done that, you just sort of uh, brush it and spread it. Not not with the intent to remove it, but more to, um, to spread it around and uh, get it to go into like the cracks and crevices. And need be if there's too much, you can always blow it away. And um, yeah, you're also left with some nice tonal variations in the in the sort of dirt mounds here, and it also helps sort of uh, add a matte finish to everything. But uh, obviously, we're we're gonna want to fix this in place. If we were doing this in large quantities somewhere, we would add some scenic glue. Um, but because it's very small quantities, and either way, some of these figures also have sort of a shiny finish. Um, I'm going to be going over everything with a uh, matte acrylic varnish and um, just two thin coats uh, and that's, that's super boring so I'm not going to show you guys and it's time consuming but uh, yeah that also helps fix in place all of these pigments um, and yeah great technique so I'll, I'll show you guys once I'm finished in a second and that'll actually probably be the end of this video. Alright well uh, and that's gonna have to do it for this video. Everything's dry, everything's solid. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I'm gonna leave it on that note. Um, 
And I know what you might be thinking, Ben, this is an incredibly, uh, um, well, obvious video, I guess, like the, the stuff that I showed was very obvious. And yeah, that's very true, this was to an extent sort of useless. But I think it's a good, um, a good way of showing like, yeah, the, the sort of different arrangements you can make and the sort of different techniques that you can utilize to really make use of the space. Um, and so yeah, that's, uh, that's it, and I think even without the, uh, without the barbed wire or the ladder or whatever, or even the, the shell casings, as long as you have, like, uh, some figures and some, some equipment, you're, you can go a long way with that, so, yeah, and, um, yeah, I think, uh, I might be turning this into sort of like a, a little mini-series, I guess, of like the whole let's transform idea. I have a lot of ideas for that. Um, I think, like for example, you can see it's, it's a very blank canvas at this moment. Uh, you can see the, the foxhole over there. I was thinking maybe I could I could do like a let's transform using similar techniques to the trenches, but um, you know some other like camouflage techniques and stuff like that. And also this this grass field, uh, also very bland. So I figured I might do something with that. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, really uh, just let, let me know uh, what you guys like. And, you know, if you, if you did enjoy this video and like, you, you learned something new, then yeah, make sure, make sure to drop a like and it, let, it lets me know what you guys enjoy. You know, um, and if you do want to see more of my content, then you can always subscribe. It helps my page grow as well, which is always nice. But in any case, you know, I really appreciate you guys uh, watching the video and watching all the way to the end. It's, uh, yeah, it's much appreciated. So, uh, with that said, if you guys want to see more in-depth or, like, better pictures uh, of this finished, uh, make sure to go check out my Instagram channel, or Instagram page, sorry. Uh, I'll have some, some better pictures posted, as well as some more frequent updates and, uh, yeah, and if you have any questions or anything or any like video ideas, any input is welcome. So you can always DM me or you know put something in the comments below. Everything's um, it's all good. It's all good. So yeah, uh, with that said, that's uh, the end of the video, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And yeah, have a good day. Farewell.